Welcome back to Shakespeare's Test Kitchen. Episode 9. It's happening. It's happening. Cheers. In this episode, we will be making Sir Toby Belch's favorite holiday snack, cakes and ale. Cakes and ale! Cakes and ale are mentioned in Shakespeare's play Twelfth Night. As it happens, Tara Flanagan is presently doing a production of Twelfth Night at the Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey. So, with access to an actual Toby Belch, we thought we would treat you to a mini-performance by the great actor Jeffrey Bender. To set the scene, it is rather late in the evening, and Toby has been up carousing with his friends when the puritanical steward Malvolio shows up to squash their fun. Toby turns on him and declares, Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think because thou art virtuous, there should be no more cakes and ale? So the play's title, Twelfth Night, actually refers to the twelfth day of Christmas, the sort of ending of the Christmas celebrations. Shakespeare never actually mentions Christmas, so what's the significance of the title Twelfth Night? There is evidence that Queen Elizabeth commissioned Shakespeare to write the play as part of her festivities to end the Christmas tide season. You know, I'm having a party, mm-hmm. and I just want something fun for the last night, for Twelfth Night. Could you just type? No, you don't type. I don't know, something to wrap it all up. I have a thought about that. I, I think I will write one of the greatest pieces of English literature. Thank you so much. That would really help. What's more interesting, however, is the way in which Shakespeare uses the characters of Sir Toby Belch and Malvolio to embody the Christmas traditions as they were celebrated in Shakespeare's day. By the Middle Ages, Christianity had replaced pagan religions in Western Europe. However, many pagan customs were simply incorporated into the Christmas tradition, things like Yule Log and Saturnalia and other solstice traditions. In Elizabethan England, believers attended church, and then they let loose with some pretty wild, slightly subversive celebration, very similar to Mardi Gras. Sounds good to me. Strict social status and even gender rules were temporarily reversed. Poor people could visit the houses of the rich and demand food and drink. If they were carolers, they might offer a song in exchange for their refreshment. If you've ever sung the song, Now Bring Us Some Figgy Pudding, that is a song that comes directly out of that tradition. You show up, you sing your little song, and embedded in the song is the demand for food. Exactly. Mummers dressed in mildly terrifying costumes and masks would perform informal plays or challenge their hosts to guessing games or maybe a rigged game of dice to win their cakes and ale. If the homeowners refused them hospitality, the mummers were free to perform an act of mischief without fear of retaliation or consequences. That's much like my everyday life. I form acts of mischief without fear of consequences. These Christmas traditions were a way for the upper class to balance their debt to society by temporarily elevating the status of less fortunate people. Shakespeare's character Malvolio actually embodies this tradition by seeking to reverse the household order, becoming Count Malvolio by marrying the Countess Olivia. Another Christmas tradition was the crowning of a Lord of Misrule. Lords of Misrule could be beggars, students, servants, or any person of lower social status. It was their responsibility to organize entertainments, games, festivities, and drinking. I can organize drinking. I want to be the Lord of Misrule. You are, you are. I'm the Lord of Misrule! But you're that every day. (laughs) Sir Toby Belch serves as Shakespeare's delightfully disruptive Lord of Misrule. He perfectly fulfills his duties, encouraging his subjects, Festy, Fabian, Mariah, and Sir Andrew, in a variety of alcohol-fueled songs, dances, tricks, games, mischiefs, and enjoyment of the aforementioned Cakes and and Ale! You know, another way that Twelfth Night actually uh, perfectly embodies and represents uh, the holiday season is in the way that it treats joy in the face of sorrow. When the play begins, Olivia, Sebastian, and Viola are all grieving over the loss of loved ones. The holiday season can be a time where we all feel the loss of those no longer with us most acutely. And yet, in Twelfth Night, Shakespeare does not allow his characters to be swallowed up by sadness. Sorrow and joy, melancholy and mirth, can live side by side, and grief is not the end. By singing and celebrating with community, by feasting and opening our hearts to love, we may find joy in the midst of sorrow. And so, in the tradition of that and the holiday season, let's bake. 
Now, different Christmas cakes have evolved over the centuries, but when we refer to the term cakes and ale, we're most specifically referring to the Shrewsbury cake. Shrewsbury! The earliest recipe we could find was from 1658, from a book with the pithy little title, The Complete Cook, expertly prescribing the most ready ways, whether Italian, Spanish, or French, for dressing of flesh and fish, ordering of sauces, or making of pastry by W.M. For this recipe, you will need... Mushy butter. <laughs> what is it called? Soften. Soften, okay. One stick salted butter, soften. One half cup of sugar, plus a little extra for the rolling. It says a half teaspoon of rose water, but Elizabethan rose water was a lot less potent than what we have nowadays, so we're gonna use about half. One cup or 120 grams white whole wheat all-purpose flour. One cup or 120 grams of whole wheat pastry flour. One full tablespoon of grated nutmeg. One half teaspoon of salt. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees. In a small bowl, combine the two flours, nutmeg and salt. Stir together so that the nutmeg and salt are distributed evenly. Cream together the butter and sugar. Add the rose water. Mix until combined. Add the flour mixture to the butter-sugar mix. Stir thoroughly to combine. Divide the dough into two separate balls. Nice balls. Roll each ball into a log approximately one and one half inch in diameter. Sprinkle a thin layer of sugar onto a piece of plastic wrap. Roll one of the cookie logs onto the sugar and then use the plastic wrap to wrap the cookie log. Ah! <laughs> Repeat for the second cookie log. Refrigerate for at least two hours until the cookie logs are very firm. After two hours, remove your cookie logs from the refrigerator. You're gonna line a baking sheet with parchment. We ran out of parchment, so we're using our Silpat. Using a sharp knife, cut their cookie logs into one fourth inch slices. Place the cut side down onto the cookie sheet. If you like, you can sprinkle with additional sugar. Oh yeah, look at that. So you'll bake the Shrewsbury cakes for 12 to 15 minutes until they are firm, but before they have begun to brown. Let's talk about the other half of Toby's favorite snack, ale. So what makes ale different from beer? Ah, now, both beer and ale are made from barley, but beer has the addition of hops. Adding hops to beer was prevalent in Holland and was imported into England around 1400. Hops are bitter and important for flavoring, but the main reason that you use them is for preservation. Ale is sweeter than beer. It doesn't have that bitter taste of the hops. It is flavored with a substance called gruet. Now, gruet could contain yarrow or heather or whatever additional herbs and spices that you had on hand. Now, in the lower ranks of society, ale would be brewed generally by women, just as part of the regular food production for their household. Good ale wives could sell the extra ale that they had brewed and didn't need for their family on their own premises. This is very cool. So then these houses became known as ale houses. Ah. That's where the term comes from. Because it had been boiled, ale was safer to drink than water, and it really had a fairly mild alcoholic content. Regular consumption of weak ale and beer was probably the best source of vitamin B for the general population. Well, it is very important to get our vitamins. Let's have some ale. <laughs> vitamins, vitamins. <laughs> oh. We are enjoying today a little Christmas ale. This is the Delirium Noel. I did a very bad job pouring. You are not an ale wife. Cheers. Cheers. Shouldn't we wait to have this with the cake? Yeah, I take no. my cheers back. <laughs>
Oh, garbage truck. Oh, garbage truck. Oh, garbage truck. Why must you be so loud? We're trying to shoot our episode. You must go away. Further down the road. <laughs>